welcome back to Miss G after three. We are just gonna be going over the same thing we have been going over, which is um, solving equations. Something that you guys were having a hard time with were the basics. So this is just gonna be a quick remediation video, just to remind you guys of the basics that you need to know to study for your quiz on Monday, and just to have there as an extra resource whenever you guys need it throughout the year, since we're always going to be doing equations. Something that we went over that should be in your notebooks are all of the things that we need um, of importance, which are what a term is and the things within a term that we find, like coefficients, variables, what an expression is, what an equation is, what a constant is, cases and exponents and all of that good stuff. So I'm just going to slide back down here. This is the example that we did in your notebooks. And we have something here called it that looks like this. 3b to the third power minus 6m squared plus 14y minus 17, okay? And the question was, is this an expression or an equation? This was an expression. Why was it an expression? Because there is no equal sign. The difference between an expression and an equation is if there's an equal sign or not, okay? However, there's one, two, three, four terms that are separated by either a plus sign or a minus sign, right? So something that I really wanted you guys to understand is terms. What are terms, right? So here we have one, two, three, four terms. A term can be, um, it can be just a regular number, a whole number, which is called a constant without a variable. It can be just a variable. It can be a variable with an exponent. It could be um, a number and a variable or a number of variable and exponent. And what separates our terms are our plus and our minus signs, okay? So here, our first term is 3b to the third power. Our second term is negative 6m squared. Our third term in this expression is 14y. And the very last term, which some of you didn't think was a term, is negative 17. Again, you do not have to have a variable in order to make it a term. That's really, really important. So if we scroll down to this one right here, 7x squared plus 3x plus 12x minus 8, then what we need to see is how many terms do we have? So let's count. One term, two terms, three terms, and our last term, which is four terms, okay? We have 7x squared plus 3x plus 12x minus 8. The question is, I want you guys to look at it really quick. Are there like terms? There are like terms. We have 3x and 12x because they have both of them have a coefficient and both of them have the same exact variable. Yeah, but Ms. G, 7x squared also has a coefficient and a variable, but it also has an exponent of two. That is why it is not a like term, okay? They have the same exact um, coefficient, the same exact variable, and technically the same um, exponent, which is just an invisible one, and that's why they're like terms. So now we're gonna look at some examples of one-step equations um, in order to solve for our variable, so that we know we know that when we have an equation, and again, what is an equation? An equation is when we have um, terms separated by an equal sign, right? So we have x plus 13 equals 27. Do you understand? So that's why this is an equation. So what we need to ask ourselves is what are we solving for, okay? So Ms. G is going to use the house example because you guys seem to like it. So let's look at our house, okay? Our house goes around our variable because he owns the house and whoever is with him in the house, okay? Everything on that side of the equal sign, wherever the variable is. So we have X and 13, okay? So whose house is it? It's X's house, okay? He wants to come home, he wants to be by himself, chill on the couch, he doesn't want anybody bothering him. So who do we have to kick out? We have to kick out the 13. In order to kick out anybody, to move any term from one side of the, very, from one side of the equal sign to the other side of the equal sign, we have to do inverse operations, okay? What is an inverse operation, you guys? The opposite. So we just have to do the opposite of what's happening here, okay? So since we want to take the 13 and get him out of the house, 
we have to do the opposite. So if this is positive 13, if it's adding, the inverse operation is negative 13, subtracting, okay? So we're gonna go minus 13, and that goes away, but the 13 can't just go into thin air, it has to go somewhere. So that's why we take it to the other side of the equal sign, and we get x equals 27 minus 13 is 14. x equals 14, okay? And again, we should always be checking our answers. So when we check, we're gonna put check and we're gonna say what our answer is. X equals 14, okay? We have to rewrite our problem, the original problem, which is X plus 13 equals 27. Now it's super important that wherever we see an X in the equations, we're just gonna replace it with what we found, which was 14. So instead of x, I'm gonna say 14, and I put it in parentheses just because I'm plugging it in so I don't forget that that's what I'm plugging in, plus 13 equals 27. Well, what is 14 plus 13? It's 27. Does 27 equal 27? It does, therefore we got the right answer, okay? Now let's do an example with a negative number. So here we have negative six, plus j equals 12, okay? Again, whose house is it? It's j's house, right? Who do we have to kick out of the house so that he can be alone on that side of the equal sign? The negative six. How do we kick him out? Inverse operation. What is the inverse operation, the opposite of negative six? Positive six. And again, why do we do inverse operation? Why are we doing the opposite? so that it'll cancel out and we can get rid of that term that we're trying to move. We bring it on this side as well because what we do on one side of the equal sign, we do to the other. It cancels out and we get J equals 18. And now I wanna check my work for J equals 18. Okay, as you can see, I had already used different colors. Negative six plus J equals 12. That's our original equation. And we're just gonna plug in where we see a j and 18. Negative six plus 18 equals 12. What is negative six plus 18? 12. Does 12 equal 12? It does, we got it right. Who's amazing? You are. All right, now we're doing more one-step equations, but we're doing it when we have a number and a variable that are stuck together. So before we had things that looked like um, x minus three, x plus three, right? And, and these were operations that the number isn't necessarily attached to the x, so that is why our inverse operation is either addition or subtraction. Now we're gonna look at numbers like this. Three x or x over three. What do we know? We know that when we have a number and a variable stuck together, what operation are they performing? It's multiplication, right? So if I say three X, what I'm really saying is three times X. So my, my inverse operation for this guy is gonna be division. For here, X over three, well, as Ms. G has told you over and over and over again, we don't, we don't speak like that about fractions in this class anymore. How do we read this problem? X divided by three. This is a division problem. Therefore, our inverse operation is gonna be multiplication so that we can separate them, okay? Here, they're not attached, right? That's addition and subtraction. When they're attached, we're dealing with multiplication and division. With that being said, we're gonna come back over here. 3x equals 21. Whose house is it? It's the x's house, right? Who do we have to get rid of? We have to get rid of the three. How do we get rid of the three? Inverse operation. We have to do the opposite. In order for us to know what the opposite is, we have to figure out, well, what's happening here? The three is doing what? Multiplying the x. It's multiplication. Our opposite is going to be division. So I'm gonna put my division bar divided by, what are we gonna divide by? The three, right? So that we can cancel it out. And what we do on one side, we do to the other. Why? Because three divided by three is what, guys? It's one. And what is one x? So the x is by himself. And we get x 
equals seven. Then I want to check my work. So I'm going to say, okay, x equals seven. I'm going to rewrite my original my original problem. Three x equals twenty one. Three times what? What was x? Seven. Three times seven equals twenty one. Well, what is three times seven? Twenty one. So does twenty one equal twenty one? Yes, that's a true statement. Boom, we got the question correct, and we know we're gonna get an A. Now, we have your favorite division, yay! How do we read this problem? X divided by four equals negative nine. Whose house is it? X. Who are we trying to kick out? Tell them they gotta go. The four. How do we do that? Inverse operation. So if this is X divided by four, what is the opposite of division? So that we can cancel it out. Multiplication. So I'm going to rewrite my problem first. X over 4 equals negative 9. So that I don't get confused and I have plenty of space to work. I'm going to multiply each side by 4. Right? Why? Because when we are multiplying fractions, if the numerator and the opposing denominator are exactly the same, they simply cancel out because four goes into four one time, right? It's cross simplification. So we have x equals negative nine times four is negative 36. And that's our answer. Again, I wanna check my work to make sure I got the right answer. We're checking if x equals negative 36. I'm plugging negative 36 into x. Negative 36 divided by 4 equals negative 9. Is that true? Yes. Negative 36 divided by 4 is negative 9. Negative 9 equals negative 9. Remember, this is a standard that you can use your calculator, okay? Don't try to do it in your head. And if you want to try to do it in your head just to keep things, you know, working and to try to strengthen your math skills, that's fine. But please, double check it with your calculators when you're done. All right. Goodbye, kiddos. Have a great weekend. I know I am because it's going to be my birthday weekend. And what I want for my birthday is for you to make sure that you study and you do everything that you need to do for this quiz. You guys are doing a great job. I have faith in you. It's going to be awesome. Thanks for tuning in to Miss G After 3.